Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a first look at the upcoming GPD Win Max 2. So I've been super excited about these devices, and I do want to mention that this is the Intel version. They will be releasing a Ryzen version, and hopefully I can get my hands on it. But what we have here is an Intel Alder Lake i7-1260P with 12 cores and 16 threads. And as you can see, the Win Max 2 is definitely going to be a beefy boy. But for good reason. I mean, they've packed everything you could think of into this device. We've got 4G, Wi-Fi 6, it's got Thunderbolt 4, it's got a full-size SD card slot, micro SD card slot, we can add an extra 2230 M.2 SSD to this unit, an outstanding backlit keyboard, trackpad, so basically you can use this as your everyday laptop, and then when it's time to game, you can remove these magnetically attached covers and get right to your analog sticks, D-pad, and your action buttons. It's using a Vita-style D-pad, and when it comes to the analog sticks, we've got Hall sensors here. These are actually made by Gillikid. And if you're not familiar with these Hall sensor-based analog sticks, basically instead of using a physical connection, it uses a magnetic field. And in turn, this eliminates stick drift, and we get a more accurate analog stick. The buttons and D-pad are dome-based, so we're not using a conductive pad here, and there is a little bit of a clickiness to it. Personally, I've really gotten used to it, and I'm a huge fan of the Vita-style buttons and D-pad, so we've got that here, and they work out really, really well. So inside of the box, you're going to get a user manual. I would highly recommend reading through it. We also get an extra M.2 screw because we do have a 2230 free slot in here, so we can add extra storage really easily. We get a USB Type-C cable and a 100 watt fast charger. So we've got a 67 watt hour battery in the WinMax 2, and they claim this will allow you to go from zero to 50% in about 20 minutes. So far, this thing is turning out to be an absolutely amazing device when it comes to work and play. We're gonna be getting into some PC gaming and emulation by the end of the video. But one of my favorite things about this is the display itself. It's a big, beautiful 10.1 inch IPS with Gorilla Glass 5, Near bezel-less with a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and it just looks absolutely amazing. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got a UHS-1 micro SD card slot and a full-size SD card slot, which actually supports UHS-2 with read speeds up to 312 megabytes per second and write speeds at 312. Over here on the right hand side we've got two full size USB 3.2 ports and moving around back we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, another 3.2 port, a full size HDMI 2.1 port, we've got one USB Type-C which is 3.2 and the Thunderbolt 4 port so we can connect an eGPU to this and basically turn this into a 4K gaming monster. I mean the CPU here definitely has enough power. And around front here we've got our power button slash fingerprint reader so we can log in super quickly. It's got a quad speaker setup that sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, this thing gets really loud for how small this unit is. And taking a look at the bottom, we've got two extra programmable buttons, and you might notice we've got two hatches here. One is going to be for your SIM card, because this does support 4G LTE, and the other one is for that extra 2230 M.2 that you can add down the road to add more storage. As we saw, it's got these magnetically detachable covers here, and you know, I was worried about losing these, but they've thought about this. Around back, there's two slots, and we can just slide these right in here. Really cool little feature, and personally, I'll probably have these off most of the time, because I want to use this as a handheld gaming console. But they're here, and you can always just cover up those controls if you need to. And another thing we always look for in these handhelds is analog triggers, and this one definitely has them. I do love the shape, the feel is really nice, but it doesn't seem like it has a ton of throw. And I guess there's a lot of console controllers out there like that also. Real quick, I just wanted to give you a size comparison here between the Steam Deck and the WinMax 2. So obviously the WinMax 2 is going to come in heavier than the Steam Deck, we've just got a lot of stuff packed in here. And when it comes down to it, I mean the Steam Deck itself is a bulky handheld, but it is pretty comfortable to play. So before we jump into testing, I wanted to give you a quick rundown on the specs. Remember, this is the Intel version. They will have a Ryzen version coming soon. For the CPU, we've got an i7-1260P, 12 cores, 16 threads. This has four performance cores with a maximum turbo up to 4.7, and the efficiency cores will work at up to 3.4. Built-in Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units up to 1.4 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 at 5200 megahertz, a 1TB NVMe SSD pre-installed, but as you saw, we can add SD cards and an extra 30mm M.2. 
We've got a 10.1 inch IPS display at 2560 by 1600. And as you can see, I mean, we basically have no bezels on this unit. 300 nits of brightness, 10 points of touch. It does support a 4096 pressure point pen. The unit also has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, 4G LTE, and a 67 watt hour battery with 100 watt charging capabilities. So I've just plugged this into my game capture so we could take a better look at this. I wanted to find out the stock TDP. Now from the BIOS, you can go in there and set it. There's actually three different sections you can manually adjust, but right out of the box, I haven't adjusted anything. We're at around 28 watts. So if I go here with CPU Z, run a bench, just stress it out. You can see that the power on this CPU does jump up to 28 watts. Now we do have a boost up to 32 with this, but we're just hitting up the CPU right now. Like I mentioned, you can adjust this from the BIOS or you can use a third party app. Uh, let me stop this. I've installed Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. If I go to Advanced Tuning here, you can see that we're at 28, 24 here. Let's just go. I'll take this up to 35 real quick. We'll apply that, run that stress again, and you'll see jumps up to 35. And from the extreme tuning utility, you can set the turbo time to go up a bit more. And even at 35 watts, I haven't hit thermal throttle on this unit at all. The cooling system they're using in the WinMax 2 is definitely the best that I've seen in the handheld so far, but they do have a lot of space to work with. And just to give you an idea of the performance gains you'll get while upping that TDP, I did run Geekbench 5 here. This is the stock score I got. Single core, 1575, multi, 7218. Not bad at all for a handheld. I mean, these are some really good scores, and this was at 28 watts, but at 35, single is now 1617. Multi jumped up dramatically to 9,105. I also ran 3D Mark Night Raid at the stock TDP. Total score here, 17,360. And finally, Fire Strike, coming in with a really strong 5,037. This is great for a handheld, but let's see how this thing really performs. I've got a few PC games that we're going to test, then we'll move over to emulation. And keep in mind, this is a first look video. I will be testing a lot more AAA games and emulators in the future, so keep an eye on the channel. Here we have The Witcher 3, where it's 720p, low settings, and we can get an average of around 81 FPS. Definitely playable like this. With these handhelds, I would always turn V-Sync on, that's going to save power, but with all of the games we're going to take a look at, I will have it off. And we do have a much higher resolution screen than 720p, so I wanted to see what we could do with The Witcher 3. I was sure we weren't going to be able to run this at 2560 by 1600 at 60 FPS, but it does run at 30. So from The Witcher 3 settings, you can set it up to just run at 30 FPS, and it actually looks really, really good. I know a lot of people would rather play at 60, but if you want that higher fidelity, you could definitely do it. Here's GTA 5 at 720p with a high normal mix. We averaged 83 FPS. Really great performance. Again, with all of these, I would recommend turning V-Sync on. But yeah, I mean, if you want to run this game unlocked at 720p with a high normal mix, you'll be good to go. Or you could take the resolution up to 1080. Since we've got this really nice screen, I figured we'd go ahead and test it. 1080p with that high normal mix. By the end of this, we had an average of 71 FPS. So it looks like these older AAA titles are going to run really well on this device. So let's go ahead and take it up to a newer game. And that's going to be Cyberpunk 2077. And here it is at 720p low. We can't quite hit 60 with it. We've got an average of 53 FPS. And I also have population density set to low because with these iGPUs, that really does take a toll. So setting it down from high to low makes a big difference. I also wanted to test a little bit of high-end emulation in this video, and I've said it in the past, these Alder Lake CPUs are great for emulation. And here we have PS2 using PC SX2, DirectX 11 backend, 1080p, running at full speed, and we're only pulling about 20 watts here. I also wanted to show off a little bit of PS3 emulation in this first video. We've got Skate 3 here, 720p, Vulcan backend using RPCS3. That CPU is still at 28 watts, and it runs this game really well. I did notice a few dips here and there, but I think we could totally eliminate this by upping that TDP. But keep in mind, this is a harder one to emulate. It'll breeze through the easier to emulate stuff, like Souls and Tekken 6, no problem at all. 
And the final thing I wanted to show off for this video was some Switch emulation using Yuzu. I always blur this gameplay due to reasons, but as you can see, I've got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. Running this here, it pulls up to 24 watts, and I do get some dips every once in a while, but basically what I did was install the emulator and start the game up. I didn't work with any kind of tweaks or anything like that. So yeah, the Winmax 2 definitely offers some really great performance. I will have my full review coming up in the next few days. Just need to spend a little more time with it. I'll test out a ton of games in that video, so if there's something specific you want to see, let me know what it is in the comments below. I'm also really excited about the Ryzen version. Basically, the only difference there is instead of using a 1260p, it's going to be using the 6800U, and we won't have Thunderbolt 4, but we still have USB 4 over there. Hopefully they use the same cooling system because it does work out great for this little chip here. And taking the TDP up on that 6800U is really going to help out with performance. And we'll need that awesome cooler like we have in this Winmax 2 just to keep that thing from thermal throttling. But it should turn out to be a really great device and it will offer better GPU performance than the 1260p version. But I think this 1260p on the CPU side of things does have that 6800U beat out, at least at the correct TDP. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in seeing more videos on the WinMax 2, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on. And like always, thanks for watching.